Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to be doing a review of The Mighty Dead, Why Homer Matters by Adam Nicholson. And this was a very interesting book, I should say. Um, I'm not even sure what to categorize it as. Um, it's part philosophy, part history, part like a memoir, and also part travelogue. Um, as the author goes to all these different places, basically looking for research material, uh, for his discussions on various facets of Homer, um, while also basically just relating um, experiences in his past, like for example, like when uh, he goes sailing in the North Sea or um, in the desert uh, in the Near East and that sort of stuff, um, and how it relates to different things, and it all meshes together pretty good. And was, I've never really read anything quite exactly like that before, so that was definitely refreshing. Um, however, there were still some problems with the book. Uh, most notably, I felt the first half of the book read a lot better than the second half of the book. Um, the second half started dealing with a lot more um, abstract topics, I guess you could say, and for some reason it just wasn't as convincing as the first part of the book. Um, and to be honest, um, even after reading The Mighty Dead, Why Homer Matters, I probably couldn't coherently <laughs> tell you why. Homer Matters, to be honest. Um, the book did make me think a lot, which is always a good thing, but um, I, there, I don't really know. There really isn't a general uh, thesis that I could pick out from the book, to be honest. Um, and it's more of there's like a bunch of different little things as to why Homer Matters. Um, and a lot of it is actually personal sort of uh, subjective stuff. What I did like though was that he dealt with both the Iliad and the Odyssey throughout the book. Um, it wasn't, you know, just one or the other or going through one then the other. He took Homer um, as a composite whole. Um, he does have a chapter on, you know, who was Homer? Where did Homer actually live? When did he live? What was her real name? All that good stuff. Uh, which. To be honest, I've done a little bit of reading on uh, Homeric questions like that, and that part really didn't interest me too much. But if you, if you've never actually looked into all these Homeric problems, you, uh, you're in for a treat just because there's so many crazy ideas out there because everyone wants to know, and obviously we're never, well, excuse me, we'll never know. But it's always just kind of fun to uh, look into stuff like that. He puts forth some really interesting ideas about Homer. Um, about, or at least about the writings of Homer, and I agree with some of them, and I don't agree with the, um, some others. Um, namely, the big one I don't really find, I didn't find his argument that convincing, was that uh, the origins of the material from Homer comes from um, a steppe people instead of an Aegean or a Mediterranean people, and I just felt he could have polished that up quite a bit more. However, his argument for Homer dating back to even before the time of the actual Trojan War, which was a historical event most likely around in the uh, 1300s BC, um, he are, has some pretty good arguments to why that should be pushed back even a few more centuries before that, which would put it to like either the beginning of the Mycenaean Age instead of the end of the Mycenaean Age, and even into the Minoan Age. Uh, that I found pretty different, but uh, I did like his arguments for that part. Now, on the plus side, Adam Nicholson is a really, really good writer and is very enjoyable to read. Um, it flows really well, it's just sometimes the topics become super abstract, so it's kind of hard to follow in the sense of what we're talking about, even though what we're talking about is really well written, if that makes any sense. Um, and just like reading some of the other titles that he's um, finished, and he's also just written a book on like seabirds or something. But he's got uh, uh, Men of Honor, Trafalgar, and the Making of the English Hero, Atlantic Britain, uh, Sea Room and Island Life, Restoration, the Rebuilding of Windsor Castle. I mean, he's got all kinds of like different topics that he writes about, which is pretty interesting. And I think that's partly why this book, like I said, is part travelogue, part you know, personal memoir and history and philosophy and all kind of blended together into this book. Now, there were some really good chapters in this book, and my favorite was definitely the chapter on Milman Perry and folk singers and the Guslari, which, um, if you guys don't know who that was, he was like a professor in the, like, 20s and 30s, I believe, and he went around Eastern Europe, especially Yugoslavia, and he basically conducted oral research on folk singers that could, you know, 
recite these like 10,000, 15,000 line epic poetry basically um, in the modern age. Now Perry pioneered the whole uh, modern interest in folk singing and epic poetry where, you know, like I said, these 15,000 line poems could be recited um, basically at will by those who are trained um, in the uh, crafted phrases in the uh, constructed uh, meters and all that stuff and how basically that sort of um, training and that sort of way of doing things was probably how Homer was transcribed down to us and all that sort of stuff. I felt that chapter was really really good um, and is super interesting and I thought that was the highlight of the work. Now overall though like I said some of the chapters just kind of dragged on and on especially on the second half of the book. Um, and it just like kept going. It was just starting to get kind of just sort of vague uh, as to why Homer actually matters. And uh, for that reason, I'm probably going to give this book uh, three and a half out of five stars. Um, it is really well written, though. So I probably will check out some of his other works. And always remember, read victoriously. <laughs>